good morning and today I'm heading down the lake to do a 5k time trial so the reason I'm doing this time trial is after the illness and after all the setbacks I've had recently I just wanted a, a run out a hard run out to see to see how fit I am basically and the other reason is I have a quite yeah, I have quite a big goal coming up and this is the start of that training block and I wanted to see how fit I am now so that I can adjust workouts, um, make sure my goals are achievable and so that I can progress gradually rather than try and jump in where I want to be. Um, it's much better to train at the level I am at now and a 5k time trial will give me a good idea of um, how fit I am. It's not, you know, it's not something I've been training towards, but it does give you a good general idea of the sort of shape you're in. I will reveal what my goal is later in this video, um, but the actual time for that goal will somewhat be dictated by how this time trial goes. Obviously, the goal can change through training, but um, this will give you a good idea where I'm at and where I want to go. The course I'm doing it on is the same course as I did the 10K time trial, so it's down Lydney Lake. Uh, it's measured, so I measure the 10K, I know how much one loop is. I'm going to measure how much further round I need to go on the last lap to make it an accurate 5K. Uh, as with the 10K, I'm going to add some distance on as an adjustment factor to make sure it is accurate. Um, because I know that GPS on loops isn't that great and there's no point in me working out how fit I am based on um, you know, a course that isn't, isn't right. Uh, it's Monday, it's going to be a fun start to the week. It's not early, we're starting at about 9, um, so I'm just having some breakfast and a coffee now. It's a beautiful day, but it's not too warm yet. And I'm excited. I love time trials. I love working hard. I hate 5Ks, but um, it should be good. Kelly's going to come down and film some stuff. So hopefully we'll get some good content and you'll enjoy watching me suffer. Right then, so warm up and drills and strides done. I'm not feeling great, but I'm gonna try and shut that out of my head. I don't feel very biomechanically efficient at the moment, but um, I've got all the support down here with me, <laughs> cheering me on, so I'll give it a crack and see what I can do. Running fast. Dada run fast and you eat all the biscuits, is it? Well done, Bo, keep it up. Dad is on lap number four. Harry's on biscuit number two. <laughs> Come on, Matt, hang in there. You got this, come on. Use the pain. Push, push, push. How was the hurt locker? I hurt so much, so badly. Oh no. Uh, proud of the effort I put in. Time was nowhere near where I thought it'd be. But that's why I came out here to find out. Find out what shape I'm actually in. Not the shape of my head, not the shape I want to be in. 
not the shape of my goal marathon pace or what would equate to it, just the shape I'm actually in. 5k, let's have a look, screen's changed, all stats, 5.08, that's 5k measured, 16.22, 5.11 pace, I went off at like 4.50 pace, 4.55, so I blew myself into a massive box early on, and then when your pace is slipping slower than your half marathon pace, you know you're in trouble or your half marathon PB pace, I should say. But yeah, I gave it a blast. I'm happy I didn't give up, and I wanted to loads of times, but what kept on going through my head round and round is, it doesn't matter what time you do, finish the 5K, get the training effect, learn, see what shape you're in. You pull out at 2K, 3K, you don't learn a thing. So I pushed when it hurt, and now I can learn and make all my marathon, oh, there we go, my goal. I'm aiming for a marathon, so make all my marathon paces a little bit slower, a little bit more reasonable, but still with a big end goal, which I'll tell you about later. So I'm just walking Harry, uh, trying to get him to go off for a nap. He's fighting it. He's very stubborn. So I thought we'd talk about earliest 5k and also what my goals are. So I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty disappointed with 16.22, was it? Um, I went through in sub 32 in Copenhagen half last year. I've run sub 32 for 10K a number of times. So to not be able to break 16 for 5K was a bit of an ego knock. Um, but it's okay, I know what to do. I've been in 16 minute 5K shape lots of times and I progressed quite quickly to um, faster paces over the marathon. It was a shock because of the training that I did in lockdown and how well that went. Um, but clearly this illness has really knocked me back. Uh, illness plus mistraining and I'm back in 16 minute 5K shape. So that's where I'm at now, but where am I headed? Well, I didn't think any marathons were gonna start popping up, but it looks like a few might. London's off. London, um, I'm pretty sure London will go with an elite only field. Maybe they'll put something virtual on, but I can't see them putting on a race for the masses. I've heard lots of rumors from different people and yeah, my, my hopes for running London are gone. Um, but what has popped up is if London announced they're off, Wrexham are planning on putting on almost like a sub-elite marathon. So it'll be laps, I think it's seven laps of a flat course in Wrexham. Um, they've got qualifying times uh, which you have to meet to even enter the race. Um, but it sounds like there'll be a lot of good runners there, which is what I need to run fast. I find that I need fast runners around me in order to get the best out of myself. Um, I'm not sure what will happen with, with regards to whether you'll be allowed to run in packs or groups. Um, I think that'll depend on how socially distanced rules progress over the next, next eight or nine weeks. Uh, but it gives me nine weeks to get ready for a marathon and I'm really excited about it. So the marathon is my absolute favorite distance. I'm not in the shape I want to be right now, but with the focus of a marathon in nine weeks time, uh, it gives me that, uh, well, I already was motivated, but it gives me even more motivation to make sure I nail the training. So I know the shape I'm in. Uh, I did want to set a time goal, but based on a 16.22, that would be well off my PB. Um, so let's not set a time goal quite yet. Um, let's just say I want to run a PB and we'll go from there. Hopefully uh, I'll take a big step up in fitness. Um, but you can't force it. You just got to do the work and see how your body responds. I do find that I find it easier to get back to a, a fitness or you know running paces that I was at before than it is to progress to paces you've never run before. So hopefully I'll be back in that sub 230 shape and then hopefully I'll be able to push down, uh, push the pace down and go even faster than that. I'm hoping that you'll want to follow along this journey. Uh, it's, a, it's a crammed marathon block, but I'll just do what I can and see what sort of shape I can get in by 4th of October. So the next eight weeks will involve 
lots of long runs, lots of marathon sessions and a, some faster stuff as well. I'm really excited because I haven't raced a marathon in ages and we'll do the Seven Bridge as a tune-up 10k. I don't think there's any other races I'm entered for. That's Harry. He's, as you can tell, hasn't fallen asleep. And yeah, it should be good. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'll do um, weekly training vlogs like the All In or if I'll do videos like this where it's just a session but in a bit more detail and depth. Let me know in the comments what you'd prefer. Um, but I will be sharing my journey towards the Wrexham Marathon um, if it goes ahead, if nothing changes, in nine weeks time. I'll start with my first marathon session this week on, I think I'll do it on Thursday. Can't wait. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week or the end of this week with a training update.